Good evening and uh, welcome to this planning committee meeting of South Oxfordshire District Council. I am Councillor Peter Dragonetti and I am the meeting. Only members of the planning committee who are here in person are allowed to vote and we will be hearing from objectors, supporters and parish and ward councillors both in person and online. Um, any external speakers, uh, turn off their camera and microphones until they want to speak. Mind you that only those who are registered speakers are allowed to speak at this meeting <laughs> will be called upon at the appropriate time. Voting will be by show of hands unless there is dispute, in which case I ask the clerk to take a roll call. Um, and I'll keep in, can please everyone mute or switch off their mobile phones in the event of emergency. Uh, can everyone leave the room by the stairs they came in and assemble? at the front of the building. Um, item two, uh, on the agenda now is apology to absence. Uh, Darius, could you uh, advise? Yeah. Uh, thank you, Chair. We have received apologies for absence from Councillor Ken Harlett, who is substituted for Councillor Stefan Gavrishak, and Councillors Tim Bearder, Axel McDonald, David Brotherton, and Elizabeth Gerst. Chairman, I heard from Ian Snowden, he's stuck in traffic as well, coming the other way, but he should be here Okay, thank you. Um, well, we will proceed anyway to keep us going. Um, so, so we have the minutes of the previous meeting. We have uh, circulated the minutes of the meetings held on the 1st of February and the 21st of February. We're happy to adopt and sign them. Yes. Thank you. Of course. Uh, Stephen, I suppose that they're. Yes. Uh, Councillor Hillier, second. Thank you very much. All those in favour, I think all, all those in favour, we spend. Thank you. Uh, thanks for reminding us, uh, Darius, on that one. Um, item four declarations of interest. I believe we have one declaration of interest from Councillor Habal in respect of the first item. Yeah, so I, I'm declaring an interest in items eight and nine. Um, these are the planning applications for Bishop Court Farm, Manchester on Thames. Um, I was chair of the licensing panel that approved the premises license for the Smoke Cafe, which is situated in Bishop's Court Farm. Therefore, I will be um, stepping aside and not taking part in the debate or voting on those applications. Okay, thank you very much, Dr. Cobell. Um, no other. Declarations of interest. Um, I think item five, urgent business. Uh, do we have any uh, urgent Lunch, business? Lunch chair. No, spend it. Uh, item six, then proposals for site visits. Do we have any proposals there? That's uh, Casey Rahe. Um, yeah, I have proposals that we visit uh, Bishop's Court Farm for the items for eight and nine. Um, I think, do you want me to tell you why? Yeah, please. Yeah. Um, I think this is quite um, a complex application. I think um, it's very important to see this in the context. It's a conservation area, it's in degree belt, it's got some archaeological interest around. And while, I mean, I know the area and I can see how it sits, I think if people don't know the area, I think it's important to understand how the, um, the landscape around it, as well as the actual context of the farm. Okay, well, it's, um, certainly it is a fairly complex uh, um, application. So, uh, yeah, I just, just, just ask a question. Can I just check in terms of the plan? Obviously, obviously, we'll do the presentation with photographs. That might be sufficient to be able to make an informed decision. I mean, I haven't seen it yet, obviously. But. I mean, I'm quite happy to, if the chair thinks it's a good idea to go through that, and then we can discuss whether a visit, if that, if that would work, <laughs> is important. Um, but I, mean, I think the pictures are good. I haven't seen, well, obviously, we haven't seen the pictures. But the plans are quite good, but I just think it is quite complicated. So um, I don't know what the other councillors think who don't know that area particularly. <coughs> so I, want to wait I don't know. It's, it's a question on balance. Sorry, it's through the chair. Yeah. Um, question on balance. Can I ask whether there are speakers for this application here? Yes, there are. There's um, 
the residents or the age, well, the, the uh, supporting agencies here in person and uh, the Dorchester Parish Council and the objector are here all, all virtually. So that's, that, that's only the supporter here is here in person. Um, well, um, in that case, we can, it, it would be fair to go through the application. Um, I've seen the photographs, I've seen the plan, have been explained by the, um, uh, by the officer, and then we can see whether we we can come to a decision on the basis of the information we have, or whether we still feel we need to have a site. Uh, mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Um, in that case, we uh, um, we'll move on to uh, item eight, and it'll be we'll be taking it together with item nine, which is a little building application for the same development. And in your the uh, papers this evening, those these two applications, um, which will be voted on separately. I'm. Um, I've been informed that the, the, the papers are exactly the same. So, uh, let's just focus on the uh, pages. Bear with me. Pages 21 to 70. 21. Uh, we don't need to go on to pages up to 121. So, quite a big saving there. Um, so, I then invite. Uh, well, Donaldson, I think you are here in person to take us through this application. Thank you, Chair. In the case, obviously, these applications they are before members this evening. The offer the recommendation for approval conflicts with the views of Dorchester on Thames Parish Council. The application site is located on the northwest side of Dorchester on Thames, forms part of the farmyard area associated with. The nearby Bishop's Court farmhouse, Ray Two listed farmhouse dating from the 16th century. Uh, the entire site is located within the Oxford Greenbelt, Dorchester on Thames Conservation Area. Planning permission and listed building consent is sought for the change of use and conversion of the central range of barns from agricultural to residential use, comprising of one two bedroom unit and two bedroom units. Should be noted that the central range already benefits from planning permission for conversion into a single dwelling house which remains extant till 2025. The units uh, themselves will place inwards into a central courtyard, amenity garden areas for each of the units located on the outer facing aspects of the buildings, a new vehicular access across the field to the north giving access to Abingdon Road is also proposed. The new access is required because the garden area of Unit A removes the existing access route to the northern part of the site. The principle of the development is acceptable as policy 81 of the local plan allows for residential development where it would, be, where it would bring redundant or disused buildings into residential use and would enhance its immediate surroundings. As detailed in the committee report, it is your officers view that the design and appearance of the converted buildings be in keeping with the area and be of a sufficiently high quality and make a positive contribution to the site and the conservation area. Furthermore, the development would not be harmful to the setting of the adjacent listed building, the openness of the green belt or the amenities of neighbouring properties. The proposed new vehicular access from Abingdon Road would provide access to the buildings in the northern part of the farm site with the proposed residential units utilising the existing access from the high street to the east. The highway liaison officer has confirmed that the visibility displays demonstrated for the new access needs guidance and are considered acceptable in this location. In addition, the access would have sufficient width to allow for two vehicles to pass, in addition to providing a passing space. Therefore, it is unlikely to have a significant, significant adverse impact on the highway network. Concerns have been received about the potential for the new access used in connection with future development at the site, 
that's not yet been applied for or received planning permission. That in the absence of an agreed master plan for the site, it is difficult to access, sorry, to assess cumulative impact of wider development on the site. Future development across the wider farm site is particularly sensitive given the number of constraints present. However, development that does not farm part form part of this application uh, should not unduly influence this application's assessment. The requirement of a master plan to form part of an application under policy DES4 of the local plan is for proposals on allocated sites and major development. This application is neither of those. Um, therefore, it's your officer's opinion that there, there are not grounds to resist planning permission based on potential future development at the site. Any future applications at the site will of course be assessed in full and on their own merits. In heritage terms, the new access has not been objected to by the conservation officer. In fact, it has been highlighted by them that an, uh, an 1845 tide map indicates that the former principal access to the farm was from the north, roughly aligning with the route of the proposed access on this application. Officers conclude that the development is in compliance with national and local development plan policies and is therefore recommended for approval. However, please note that uh, conditions three and four uh, recommended relating to materials and joinery details, uh, it's my intention to, to recommend they are modified from being pre-commencement in nature to compliance as that level of detail has in fact or been supplied as part of the application process. Thank you, Will. Um, we now turn to um, most of our public speakers, which is Mr. Rob Ballantyne, the Vice Chair of Dorchester Parish Council. Your um, virtual. Good evening. Yes. Hello. Can you can you uh, see me and hear me? Yeah, yes, we can. You'll have about five minutes to uh, to speak, uh, Mr. Ballantyne. OK, you thank ready? you. Yes, I'm ready to go. OK, um, Dorchester Parish Council is not opposed to uh, any development on the farm in principle. In fact, we're not opposed to the proposal for housing. Uh, we didn't oppose it when the application came forward in 2020. Um, and had the new track not been added to it, I think these houses could well have been built by now, certainly be well on the way. Um, the new track is not necessary for um, the housing development. It, it, as we saw from the map earlier, uh, the access from the high street, the existing access is closer and more convenient for these um, uh, for this particular development. Um, and I think actually that the developers thought that themselves when they first applied because the, their initial design and access statement said that access from the high street was acceptable in highways, environmental and amenity terms. So, um, we consider that the, the, the track is being actually proposed for other reasons other than the, the, the main purpose of this, um, uh, this application. We, the Parish Council gets a lot of applications um, from Bishop's Court Farm and we accept that they need to be looked at on their merit, but I th we also think that we must consider cumulative impacts. Um, there was a, um, a pre-application report on proposals for developments uh, on the site uh, in 2021. Um, that made a number of comments which we think are pertinent. It said the site appears to be being developed in a piecemeal fashion. Um, we, the farm itself has been quite open in, in that it wants to do a lot of developments in terms of tourism, offices, education, residential, holiday accommodation. Uh, they've talked about parking for up to um, 80 uh, spaces. As we've heard from at the beginning, the site is, is a particularly sensitive one. Um, the pre-application report said sites outside the built area of the village and environmentally, historically and naturally sensitive. As such, the main principal consideration in line with SOLP policy EMP 11 is whether the scale of the development is appropriate. It is clear that any development of this nature proposed must be small scale. I'm concerned at this stage that the cumulative impact of what's being proposed is not small scale. And it also said 
and this is relevant to what um, the planning officer said recently, any application would need to be accompanied by a design and access statement in accordance with policy DES3 and a master plan in accordance with DES4. So the planners were at that stage suggesting that there should be um, a master plan. The, the site is now being developed in a piecemeal fashion, um, and therefore there isn't a full application um, which we can look at in the round. The scheme overall does represent a significant change in the character of Bishop's Court farm site and is, is likely to um, detract from some of the peaceful and rural nature of that particular area. In fact, one of our no neighbourhood development plan policies, DOT 14, um, seeks to preserve the peace and tranquility of, of parts, parts of the village. Significant major development uh, on the farm will have a traffic impact. Um, a traffic study was done by um, the farm. Thank, we thank them for that. It says that there would be up to 40 vehicles an hour going down the high street. Those of you who know Dorchester will know that um, that high street is, uh, uh, is pretty congested uh, and difficult to navigate. In conclusion, the, the Parish Council does recognise there's a context for and a need for agricultural diversification, community facilities, small scale tourism, leisure and housing. We, we, we don't object to any of those. In fact, we haven't objected, as I said earlier, to any of the proposals that have come forward so far. Uh, so far. However, we would refer to the, um, um, the planning uh, pre-application report uh, earlier, which said that uh, it concluded by saying, I am the view that the proposals as submitted is unlikely to be acceptable in planning terms. So what I think with, okay, what I'm, I'm just, just finalising by saying that what we are looking for is the opportunity to comment on and make representations on the plans as a whole and to assess the total likely impact on the whole village, not dealing with um, uh, a large number of applications uh, in a piecemeal basis. And I think that's what the pre-application report said as well. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Valentine. Um, do we have any questions for uh, Ms. Valentine? Members? Yes. Okay. Mr. Um, thank you, Mr. Valentine. It certainly made our, our potential decision easier in, in saying that the development on the site, we are broadly an acceptance with, it's really the access that's problem. So can I just Absolutely focus right. on that? Can yes. I just focus on that for a moment? You referred to a um, a traffic survey that, that said that there would be 40 vehicle movements um, spilling out, presumably onto the Oxford Road or onto both of the roads. Um, I think, I haven't got it in front of me, but I think what it said was at, a, at the peak, um, there was likely to be an additional... 70 um, movements along the Abingdon Road. I focused on the Oxford Road and the High Street because that is, as I say, obviously if you know the village, you'll know, that is that yeah. is the problem area of access to the village. Parking on both sides, houses without parking, it gets congested, air quality you know, is affected. And that, those were the issues. Therefore, can I just ask to you, Chair, yeah. a, a supplementary question? Wouldn't the road that he's been punched through at the top onto the Abingdon Road actually help you in terms that it would the traffic would share the load between the two entrances? Therefore, surely that should be acceptable as a road. Um, it 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 might do. Um, we think that traffic coming from the the Wallingford. Um, Reading direction will in fact go through the village um, and, and therefore that's why there's an interrelationship between the amount of traffic and the scale of the development that's being proposed. Um, if, if, if there is very significant um, uh, development allowed of a touristic nature, um, then it will generate more traffic. Probably um, the traffic survey showed that um, you know, more than half of it will come up the Abingdon Road, but there will be a significant amount coming up the um, up the High Street. And I, I don't think that the traffic survey really addressed the question, which we were interested at the time, about whether um, it would in fact reduce um, traffic in the High Street. That seems to me to be unlikely. 
Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Casey. Are you ready? Thank you. Yes. Um, thank you for that, Mr. Valentine. I just wanted to clarify one thing you said about um, there are some plans. Did you say that there were uh, possibly going to be 80 parking spaces? That, that, I wasn't that's... sure where you get that from. Well, I, I just it just comes from um, what I believe are conversations that are being had locally. Um, if you've got the um, uh, if the developer is there with you, he will be able to confirm or deny that. There's certainly not an existing application for that number. But if you've seen a plan of the site, you will see that there is a proposal for um, significant parking off, off this proposed new access. Any other questions for uh, Mr. Valentine? I see none. Well, in that case, thank you very much, Mr. Valentine. Thank you. Um, thank you for uh, your input there. And um, we now turn to our next uh, speaker, who is uh, Patrick Clayfan, uh, who is also uh, speaking virtually. Are you there, Mr. Clayfan? Looks like. Uh... Yes. Oh, good. There we go. Can you hear me okay? Uh, we can. We can hear you and see you. So uh, when you're yeah. ready. Okay. Five minutes. Yeah. Um, well, I'm a local uh, Dorchester resident, um, so thanks for uh, the time this evening. Um, really, the, the the public pack agenda document for this meeting does not really highlight one of the main points made by numerous representations during the consultation period for this plan. That is, the farm already has a perfectly good access road to serve a redevelopment scheme of this nature. Indeed, the extant permission granted for a similar scheme underlines this point, as the previous speaker was saying. Therefore, the proposed new access road is not really necessary. And a choice is being made here to put an additional roadway through an important part of the conservation area. Now, when I read the local authorities' publications about conservation areas. It refers to the desirability of preserving or enhancing the character and appearance of the conservation areas and their setting where it contributes to its significance. So with this in mind, surely putting an unnecessary roadway through this important part of the conservation area does not serve to preserve or enhance it. I thought the importance of this part of the conservation area was well documented by the planning inspector in, appointed by the Secretary of State to decide on the appeal by the farm's predecessors in 2018 for a redevelopment scheme at the farm. This was not actually listed in the um, relevant planning history part of the public pack actually. But anyway, um, Inspector Taylor described the conservation area in the appeal decision as follows, and I quote, the conservation area incorporates both the historic part of the village and a significant area of agricultural land near the site. Both areas and the contrast between the built form of the village and the agricultural landscape contribute to the significance of the conservation area. The agricultural nature of the land around the site contributes significantly to the rural setting of the edge of the settlement and the setting of this part of the conservation area. So this proposed new roadway to Abingdon Road would completely change and significantly harm this important part of the conservation area. So really I would urge the committee to reflect on this and reject this part of the proposal, particularly when no one else will benefit from it, really. I request this as someone who has been a South Oxfordshire resident for around 50 years and appreciate how fortunate we all are to live in a beautiful part of the country. A big part of this, I think, is how well we maintain its beauty, which con conservation areas play an important role. So again, I would urge the committee to reflect and reject this part of the proposal. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Clayfan. Um, do we have any questions for uh, 
Ms. Clairfan? I see none. In which case, uh, thank you very much. Thank you. To, uh, if I turn your camera and your microphone off, that would be very okay. helpful. Thank you. Yep. Uh, and we, uh, our next uh, speaker is again in person, Mr. Trevor Avery, who's our the agent for the Belt Chain. Yes, please sit there. Thank you. <coughs> How long do I have? Oh, five minutes, Mr. Avery. I'll try and be short, sir. <laughs> um, It seems to be that the nub of this really revolves around the access road. I think the, the development of the of the of the existing bond structures are are acceptable, it seems to be accepted. Um, we submitted this application two and a half years ago. And two and a half years we spent um, liaising with the parish council to try and provide information that um, that they requested. We we have issued actually a, a master plan of the site. Um, that originally wasn't in the correct format and we issued it in a further format. So they do actually have a master plan for the whole site. Master plan hasn't changed since the pre app that was made in 2021. My recollection of the pre app, which unfortunately the case officer couldn't visit the site because of COVID, so it had to be done remotely um, via photographs and Google Maps. Um, the issue, one of the main issues, were um, to simplify a complex site and to do that would be to separate the uses that we have farm uses potential residential uses and really if we could do that by creating different access points and access roads so that they didn't cross that would be actually beneficial for the development of the site so right back from the pre-app and the pre-app we must remember is there to feed into the development and the design it's not a, a fully formed thing this is what we're doing it's actually for consultation for the, for the planning system to feed into the design. And that was what was suggested right at the beginning. So under request of the Parish Council, we submitted uh, the master plan. We submitted a revised master plan in a different format. Um, we've met with the Parish Council. We've explained the master plan at length in person. We've addressed their queries. So we have gone more than what I've ever done, I think, on any other project to try and kind of explain the justification. Um, we, a request from the Parish Council uh, was given for a traffic impact settlement, and that was carried out at quite great expense by the applicant, and it took quite a long time. And it is a very complex, pretty long document. But in essence, um, we asked for an executive summary so that we could all understand this. And um, the, uh, the consultant basically said, uh, if I can find it, um, the predicted increases in traffic during most periods is under 30 vehicles per hour if all elements of the master plan are implemented, which basically equates to less than half a vehicle per minute or whatever it is, one vehicle per two minutes. That's if all elements within the master plan are implemented. And within the master plan, the only things that are there are um, some tourism activities around the lake, which haven't got planning. Conversion of an existing barn doesn't have planning. Um, and the rest is just the farm traffic. I think the, the central barn conversion. Um, the master plan hasn't changed. There is a real fear um, from the parish council that something is going to occur on this site that actually in reality isn't going to happen. And um, I think the other issue is why, why do we need another access road? I mean, that, that's, that's propped up a number of times. There is massive congestion in the high street, which and there are health and safety issues along there. It's not unusual for cars to have to reverse down the high street. Um, what we are doing is moving the farm traffic away from the residential area, again, part of the pre -act. So we're pulling it round up onto Abingdon Road. Now, uh, yes, that re-emergence of the old 1840, whatever it was, track is going to have an impact on some houses that are locally within there because it hasn't been there before the track predated those houses. But the overall impact is going to, is going to improve congestion on the high street and going to prevent farm traffic coming all the way down onto the high street and into the old access. 
So there are good reasons for having the additional action. Thank you very much. We've got some questions for uh, Mr. Avery, uh, Councillor Lucan. Yeah. Um, thank you. I, I must say, very good speakers tonight, which has given absolute clarity to the situation. And then I'm going to be direct and ask um, how amenable would you be to removing the new access, or is that a definite no from your point of view? Removing the new access. Yeah. Uh, well, the reason it's partly there because it was requested by the planning department to okay. be included within this application. Um, I think it it would be a good thing for the village for it to be there. It just seems logical to me that you have a residential access on the side and you have a farm agricultural access on the side. You're separating two uses that aren't compatible. Um, it just so happens that there's a garden that goes over the existing access road anyway. Um, but that, that's not the main reason, in my view, that, that there's a new track for the and it, it just to just to clarify, it's not it's not a road. It is a an unmade track. It's a it's a gravelled track within a kind of a hexagonal bed to reinforce it with passing places. It's not an estate tarmac run. That's not the proposal. Um, yes, good. Um, no, 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 no. Councillor Gabbishak. Um, uh, thank you. Uh, um, like Councillor Hadley, I think the presentations tonight have, uh, have helped, helped us. Um, <clears throat> you referred to the traffic study and you said yes. you have the study for the whole master plan and there were 30 vehicle movements. Yes. Did you have a subset of that study which actually said what the vehicle movements were for this planning application? because the traffic impact study was only required because the parish council requested it right. and the parish council requested that the traffic impact study was based on if the whole of the master plan right. which they received was implemented so right. thank you for that my subsequent subsequent sub, subsequent question is um what is the site used for currently it is a farm and there is uh an existing farmhouse that's being developed. There are there are some stabling there for horses. Um, so at the moment um, there's sheep planning season at the moment. Um, and then there's the snug, uh, the relatively new cafe. Uh, and that's all there is. So part of the issue of, of the development of the farm is diversification to make it virtually um, viable which at the moment it's not. So it's in the status of this kind of emerging butterfly to make it make it viable. But I think on a previous committee meeting, what was I found quite interesting was a committee member said, well, look, whatever you do on that farm, you have to bring the village, you have to bring the population with you, otherwise it will fail. And, um, you know, that's the desire of the ap applicant to do that. And with the village meetings, I mean, we've, we've got another village meeting. I think we do it every six months to ensure <clears throat> there's some feedback from the village. And I think there's one in the next few weeks. But there has been um, undeniable support for what's going on on the site. Um, and it, it gives opportunities for people, if they're unhappy, to also voice it. And then we can talk to them about it. Well, well it seems as though the vice chair of the, of the Georgester Parish Council would probably support it. Well, what was I think, going on? I think, and I think we are. Yeah, yeah. We are debating the access roads. Yeah. Therefore, uh, currently, you, you, you've got farm uses and a cafe, and the additional build on this site for this planning application, because we can only take into account, is for um, how many houses and how many vehicles? Three houses. Three houses. Detached? So, um, yeah, yeah detached. I've got the details. Detached, so two, five, one, yeah. two, so that probably be, I can't remember off the top of my head, but yeah. say six. Um, and you, you're removing some farm movements <coughs> by making those buildings redundant. So there's probably about, I don't know, seven or 800 square metres of farm buildings that are being made redundant. So there is, and um, I will ask the officer in a moment some further questions. So you've got the existing farm movement. You've got the three detached house with additional car movement. But the farm movements will decrease because of the 
whatever, for this application. Therefore, it would seem to me that one access would be adequate for now. And if the master plan is implemented, I'm not making a decision, I'm just asking the question. Um, therefore, if, if the master plan is implemented and in the future, further building and an access, an extra access was needed, then that could be as a subsequent thing, but we are dealing with this planning update. It's an interesting idea. The access road from High Street comes here. <clears throat> so the High Street's gone somewhere, I don't know, over here. This is the old listed farmhouse down here. These are the buildings that are being replaced. Um, the existing track runs around like that, around like that, and that's the snug that you probably all visited in the past. So the, res the, the, the amenity space for this residential unit actually sits on the access track. But to implement that, you wouldn't be able to implement that unit if you retain that. We have trees here, all with RPZ root protection zones, so we can't sort of relocate the access, otherwise that would have been a nice thing to dictate. So there's logistical issues as well. That's a lovely idea. <laughs> Thank you. Okay. Just, just one clarification. So the access to the snug will change to, to be from the Abingdon Road? Yes. Okay. Any other questions for the uh, applicants? I see not. In that case, uh, thank you very much indeed. Thank you. And go back to uh, uh, so, um, for questions for um, Will. Um, Councillor Hillier. Thank you. Um, the um, speaker just now, he said that it was down to the planning that requested that new access road. Uh, so I just wanted to hear a bit more about your reasons. Yes, certainly. Um, as it has been made clear, yeah, the application submitted didn't include the new access right. the road. And that very that became a logistical problem and it resulted in a Holding objection from the Highways Liaison Officer at Oxfordshire County Council on the basis that they were not in a position to recommend support of the application uh, where it would effectively leave the farm buildings to the north of the central range without any access to the public highway. Effectively, landlock, you know, there's no farm traffic that would currently sweep around in front of the snug would have wouldn't be able to take that route because of the garden space for, for that particular unit. Uh, and so I as the case officer requested raised with the agent and this was the sort of the driving motivation for being included into this application. Because otherwise there would be a material objection from the highways on. Well, I wasn't the case officer, but the pre the pre app that's been referred to. Obviously, I have seen and read it. He picked up on the fact that the the the, the matter of an access from Abingdon Road was sort of already being thought about. In that respect. So that I hope that's covered sort of my. Motivation for, for requesting it. Thank you. Awesome. Um, sure. Yes, a couple of, couple of questions, please. Um, the first one is that the Vice Chair of Dorchester mentioned an inspector's report regarding the conservation area, because of course we all know Dorchester, or some of us do. Um, and it is a beautiful village to be preserved. And this patch to the north of the farm building is obviously green and pleasant and conservation. Um, what is your view about punching, my word, a road up through there to the Abingdon Road? And, and the second bit is, what, what is the construction of that road going to be? 
Firstly, I would refer back to the agent's comments, mm -hmm. which were very helpful in terms of uh, highlighting that, yes, it's not going to be a tarmac state road. It is my understanding from the submitted information, which does include more plans that are in my presentation. They are in your pack. But I believe they do show some sort of construction details for the actual access route. And it's uh, gravel on the hexagonal base. Um, so I, that I feel is less, I wouldn't necessarily categorize that as sort of punching through. I think that is being perhaps more, more likely to assimilate better into the sort of more open green field than if it was just a rolling car macro with, you know, curb, curbed and, and things like that. So I, I think it's more, it's more sympathetic. It's less likely to be visually dominant and intrusive and over time continue to assimilate into the, into the character of this part of the site. It does help that it's aligned also towards the edge rather than more centrally bisecting it. So, so that was what my feeling was about. And my second question, if, if I may. Um, sorry, that was, a, that was a very reassuring answer. Um, and thank, thank you for that. that um, whenever you see a road, gravel thing going through a, a green and pleasant field. Have you seen the master plan this side? And I am asking for speculation, so you may well chop me off at the knees, Chair, on this. If there is a road put through, there is always the opportunity to say, well, there's a road there, therefore we can have six detached houses on the green area. Um, what would be your view on that? I think uh, I guess that's not. Uh, I thought you might. Yeah, well, it's, we have we have an application before us. Yeah. Okay. And uh, there's um, the, uh, the specification for this access a track or well, like an access chair. track <laughs> rather than a, a road is actually set out on page 45 of your pack, and it does say. Uh, Correct. Well, it's, it does appear to be a single vehicle with the track. This is gravel, um, and it is on a on a on a some sort of bed, and it's also got these um, trees, uh, which are standard uh, tilia trees, which I'm afraid I my my or oh, quite big a tree champion. I can't remember what a tilia tree is. Uh, perhaps spiral <laughs> tree champion will uh, help us there, but there are a number of standard, large standard trees being planted. So I think it's, it appears to be a, for all intents and purposes, a farm, a farm yeah. track in all the plans that it was from. Respectfully, Chair. Yeah. Thank you. Um, any, so, Councillor? Um, the Parish Council were talking about the High Street, and I think the agent has also talked about the High Street and Oxford Road being quite busy. But from what I'm hearing from what you're saying, that's not really the reason why we're having this this track. It's, it's actually nothing to do with the vehicle moves on the high street. I can say that that was not my motivation or the question. It was the practical side of things in terms of Determined as it was originally submitted, there's a part of the working farm no longer has access mm -hmm. to the carriageway. So it, that was that I can only speak for my motivation in the inter planning reason for asking for it was 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 that. Very much. Thank you. Any further questions for the officer? I see none. In which case, um, I'm looking for a recommendation. Um, I'd like to propose a, a motion to. Uh, we've got this uh, application to consider, Councillor Hillier. Um, I think on balance, on listening to everything this evening, um, I'm happy to proceed with officer recommendation. 
I'm satisfied that the new access is going to be a track and less invasive. And I now understand the reasons why um, that there is a need um, uh, because of um, the officer's explanation this evening. So, yeah. Thank you very much, I will second that. I'll, I'll speak now if I may. Okay, yeah. um, I, I think I have been reassured on, on, on this application, and the agent has showed the design that the, the housing is going to come off, off the Oxford Road, but the buildings behind would be landlocked, and therefore there is the need. As you know, I questioned all parties very, very closely on the um, on the style of the of the road and how many movements. And I think on balance, we have to say that um, this uh, this development is is acceptable, and it will not. The two axes don't materially change the access into and out of this site. Thank you very much, Councillor Chuck. I second. Um, well, so open, now open this uh, motion to a debate. Just to, uh, we think Councillor Casey Rahey. I just want to say that I, I will support this motion. Um, I think the presentation was very good and very helpful and clear. And um, I suggested a visit because I thought it was more complicated, but I think everyone's understood it. I've understood it really well. So I'm happy to support it. I think the idea that it may, because it's a track, may have development in the future, which is speculation. You have to bear in mind that this is still in the Oxford Green Belt. It has lots of uh, protections that it is. So I think I'm not going to um, open this up for more development. You're welcome. Anybody else wish to add anything? Um, I'll just mention I've been put my magnifying glass out and read this uh, track, and I see there's a cattle grid. At the end of it, and I don't think uh, you really have a uh, roads that are for intense development don't normally have cattle grids in them. So I'm I'm reassured by that, and reassured by the specification of this track. So um, it's giving me further comfort, and I hope it will to the rest of the committee here. So um, there's no further nobody wishes to say anything further. I'd like to go for a vote then. All those in favour of the motion to approve this application. Please uh, raise your hand. And four. All those against? And the hand up. Councillor Stone, are you abstaining? Uh, I wasn't there at the beginning of the meeting. Of course, there are no use. Okay, in that case, the uh, application is approved. Thank you very much. Uh, uh, yes, thank you. Uh, here we have a second. The second application, which is for the listed building, and another. On the fifteen pages in your pack, um, substantially the same. Um, all those opposed a motion. Councillor Hillier, give a check. Debate. In that case, we go for a vote again. All those in favour? Against? Very much. Get to page uh, one two one, which is agenda item ten. Okay, and Karen, standing for. Heron. Yes, thank you, Chair. Um, yes, the case officer can't be with us this evening, so I'm going to be presenting for him. 
Um, just to add, uh, we have received a letter of support from the headmaster of the Lawnsford Prep School. And I'd also like to make a correction to paragraph 1.4 of the report at the first bullet point. That should read two Cranford cottages and one should not be included in that bullet point. This, this application is referred to committee because of an objection from Lawnsford Parish Council who have raised concerns with the pro proposed access, stating that it would represent overdevelopment given the number of accesses on this part of the road. The Parish Council are also concerned with works on neighbouring land to the east, which they believe to be unlawful, and the implications the new access would have on an ongoing enforcement investigation. The works consist of hard and soft landscaping works, a pergola and outbuildings. The site forms part of an existing paddock which is located within the North Wessex Downs area of outstanding natural beauty. Also, the prep school is located to, sorry, to the southeast. Yeah. And um, the school's preschool um, accommodation, which is a relatively new building, which you might have seen going through North, but it's opposite the site. Neighbouring dwellings lie to the south. The school's playing field is to the north. All land within the blue line, which you can just see on the um, plan in front of you, is owned by Cranford Lodge Estate. The planning permission is sought for a new access road, including fencing and a gate on QA329. The access is intended to provide direct access to several properties which don't have their own access from the highway. These properties currently share the Morsford Prep School access. Both the school and Cranford Lodge Estate support the separation of the access points, which are currently shared. The access will be laid with decorative stone with a bitumen surface at the carriageway junction. And the next slide shows the properties that will be served by the new access. The applicant has confirmed that they have incorrectly stated in their planning statement that the new access will serve number one Cranford cottages, that is this property here that's not being shaded. Unlike the neighbouring properties, number one Cranford cottages already enjoys direct vehicular access from the highway and does not fall part of this proposal. All of the blue, all of the blue highlighted area will be served by the proposed access, and that includes two Cranford cottages, the old laundry, Cranford cottage flats, numbers one and two, Cranford lodge, and the state office, which is, I think, this building here. The applicant has also confirmed that two Wolfsford staff members each reside at Cranford cottage flats, numbers one and two. Let's run through a few photographs for you. The access is proposed in roughly this location. This is the paddock area to the left of number one Hanford and cottages. And we've got a few photographs. This is looking north, um, and the new prep school is just to the left of the picture here. And then this one is looking um, south. And this is um, a photograph across the paddock area. And the new access would roughly run along this line and join into this gravel area at the back there. This is the access to the school site at present. And you can see the access directly into the school runs where I'm, um, the cursor is at the moment. And then the access that currently serves the property is being up to the left. Sorry, you can't really see your cursor. Um, about halfway down that photograph, just before the lighter hedging. And that's a, that's, um, a photograph of the number two Cranford Cottages, which, as you can see, does not have the vehicular access onto the A329 or this property here, which I think are the flats. Um, this is the um, access road that runs off the main access into the school and curves around the back of the property. And there is a gate that you just see sort of in the centre of the photograph. Um, and that's required, I, I believe that is operated by a pin access code. And that's required for um, safety, health and safety purposes to separate off the residential properties from, from the school grounds. And then this is the existing access into the parking area and um, 
if you just see a farm building in the distance and that's about where the new access would, would meet in with the existing gravel area. Um, there are no technical uh, objections from any of our specialists. The highway officer supports the development subject to visibility and access compliance conditions. Overall, in planning balance, the benefits of the development, i.e. separating the residential access from the school traffic outweigh the potential harm. As such, the application is recommended for approval. Thank you. Thank you very much. Now turn to the um, first of our speakers. This is a Sarah Elvey, uh, right from Molesford, representative of Molesford Parish Council. We're speaking virtually. Uh, Sarah, are you there? Yes, I'm here. Oh, we can hear you. Thank you. Can you see me? That's not. Yes, it's all good. So when you're ready, we'll have five minutes. Thank you. Um, Molesford Parish Council objected to the proposed access road and continues to uphold its objection on a number of grounds with concerns regarding traffic and overdevelopment that remain unaddressed in the responses made to the proposal, notably including the planning officer's report by Mr Heron. With regard to the traffic, uh, we wish to highlight the following points to the committee. The proposal claims to provide access to five properties. We believe this is misleading as some of these properties already have separate access. We also note that from the properties that will apparently benefit, there have been no supporting responses from any residents. However, there has been an objection from one of the apparently benefiting properties all of which suggests the applicant may be speaking for his own benefit rather than uh, the residents. We therefore consider the traffic congestion problem claimed on behalf of the residents here has been significantly overstated. The Parish Council has received no complaints from residents in relation to access issues here, in stark contrast to the regular representations from residents of nearby Willow Court Lane who share access with the Cranford House School and who are impacted by the school's traffic congestion. However, the key point of our objection, which is not mentioned in the officer's report, relates to the previous planning history of this paddock. This has not been referred to in any documentation, but the paddock is currently subject to an enforcement investigation, SE 22259. In 2019, permission was granted for a tennis court at the eastern end of the paddock, which included a very limited designated area for change of use and a soft landscaping scheme in the planning conditions. The delegated report from the planning officer specifically notes that the site lies within the AOMB. Great weight should be given to conserving these areas. Policy CSEN1 of the SOCS seeks to enhance the AOMBs and protect them from inappropriate development. However, subsequently, the paddock has seen the construction of significant hard landscaping and structures, including a pergola and a large gazebo, and has areas laid to gravel. None of this is shown in the submitted photos with application P22S43, uh, uh, sorry, S4300, and none of this was in the landscaping permitted for the tennis court. To us, the outcome of the investigation concerns the principle of whether this paddock should have been subject to any further development. And in the absence of this outcome, we object to the present proposal as overdevelopment. Um, we're also concerned by the scale of the proposed access as a two-way road and junction. Uh, with a 4.8 metre carriageway near the entrance, this is very similar in scale to the entrance roadway of Molesford Prep School itself, which narrows to just over five metres past the entrance bay. We consider that the creation of an access road on this scale, which in truth will benefit a very limited number of properties with very limited benefits to traffic movements, will undoubtedly facilitate the further development of this site, which the applicant has gradually converted from rural paddock with or indeed without permission. We therefore continue to object and in making their recommendations, we urge the committee to consider the full planning history and current situation of this site and the future implications for it if permission is granted. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, do we have any uh, questions for uh, Parish Councillor? Um, thank you for the your written statement and the 
um, photographs that were uh, accompanied that. Um, can I clarify with you whereabouts the the hard standing and the the pergola and 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 the other um, things that you were mentioning? Um, whereabouts that is on the plans? I think that would help the committee. Okay. Um, well. I think the um, I, I'm looking at the, the the big thing with the the road coming sweeping in behind um, I think number one Cranford House uh, the pergola um, they're on on as you're coming down they're on the the right of that I think it's quite hard to see down there from the road you know and uh, it's all sort of private but yes they're they're on that that part there so I suppose they would they would go immediately behind where he's proposing to bring his road in. Uh, so they're on the paddock, but they're, they're on the paddock. Along, up, 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 up along by, yeah. They're on the paddock, the but um, closer to the uh, tennis court. So you're a little further down, I think. That doesn't actually show the tennis court. Oh, yes. Oh, sorry, I can see your map now. Um, Yes, they're on on the on the paddock part, but um, it's trying hard hard to explain. Immediately adjacent to the the tennis court, yeah, where your cursor is on there. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Sabah, another question. Ask one more question. So, so is the the, the person um, responsible for the? Uh, the development of the tennis courts, etc. That's the same applicant as the as the person who is. Um, yes. Yes. The, road, the access. Yeah. The the previous um, application bear with me, was um, P nineteen S one eight eight seven. Um, it was called. It came in under the old laundry, or um, is it that? Yes, it came in under the old laundry, but um, it, it includes that that part that we're talking about today. You can see that on, on the map. Cran uh, land north of Cranford Lodge. Uh, yes, can I um, thank you? Thank you for the clarification. Can I ask whether your concern is that this new access road will actually serve the development or serve the tennis courts that you're talking about, the hard standing, and therefore there will be even more traffic coming out of this new access? Or, um, or are you content that the new access will serve the cottages only? I think, I'd, well, I've... I've um... Our, our concern really is the overdevelopment of the site. I've no idea because there are. I'm not entirely sure who you know how, how the the residents are, work out down there. Um, I, I think there's only Mr. Mr. Crab, the applicant at number two, and um, Mr. Colville at the old laundry, and um, there's a couple of flats for teachers there. So it seems a big old um, road, doesn't it, for for four residents? For residences, so I, d I don't know what it's for. It, that's I, I can't guess. Okay, thank you. Oh, Councillor Hillier. Just ask, um, have the the residences have been there some time, haven't they? Well, I've lived in the village for um, nearly twenty years, and they've they've always been there. And they've managed quite well, and the school's been there some years, so they managed quite well up to now, haven't they? They have. Yeah. Any further questions for uh, our parish councillor? I see none, so uh, thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, <clears throat> Have, uh, we have no objectors as such, but we have um, a few questions.
cover the agent and supporter of this uh, application, and you'll appear in person, I believe. Yes, yes. Actually, uh, so I'd like to turn your camera and no microphone off, please. Thank you. Good evening. And thank you very much for the opportunity to talk to you about this. Um, can I just say straight away um, that there's been mention here of uh, residents. Uh, I'm actually one of them <laughs> uh, because I, I also live on the site in uh, Cranford Lodge itself. Uh, this is a relatively simple application, it seems to me. This is Mr. Crabb, the applicant, wanting to have a drive. It's described as a road, but it's a drive, so not two way, into his um, into the back of his property. At the moment, uh, Mr. Crabb, myself, and all the other residents there, and people who come into the offices of the estate, have to go through the Molesford Provincial School entrance. This is an entrance that is, especially at, especially at drop off and pick up times of day. And especially now that the preschool is across the road, is a very uh, busy uh, traffic area. And there is considerable um, uh, question marks, uh, I know, in the village. And I, when I spoke to the parish council about this, one of my arguments, and the argument I would put to you, is that the fact that we are introducing our own entrance into the Cranford Lodge estate and will not have to use the Molson Preparatory School entrance, actually greatly assists in the traffic flow. And I think that is one of the reasons why the headmaster of the school, as has been said by the planners, uh, has written today to uh, support this. He is concerned as you come into the Molson School entrance and you then come into our properties, you do an immediate turn left. You've got traffic coming in from the main road. You've got traffic coming out from the school. He's concerned about that being quite dangerous, quite difficult. Um, so it's a straightforward application. Mr. Crabb wants a drive into his house and into and has no access other than through the school entrance. It's the same for people like myself and the school flats and for the old laundry, as has been mentioned, and to the offices. The bit that I am a little surprised about and don't really understand is this concept of overdevelopment and the reference to the paddock. Um, I mean, what we're talking about here is Mr. Crabb's garden. And over the last um, X months, he has landscaped this garden and he's put down some gravel uh, for parking of cars, and he has done some laying out and planting, and he's put up, as has been said, a couple of uh, pergolas. And uh, I, I don't think anybody, including Mr. Crabb, has been aware of any planning requirements or strictures on any of that um, improvement of, of his own garden um, behind his house. So I'm a little bit mystified by that. And when I went to the parish council to talk to them about this application, uh, that subject was not raised with me. Um, I only discovered about it later on. So I'm a little bit mystified. We have an experience, and Mr. Crabb has experience, of dealing over a long time with the parish council on various planning matters. We've always been very open and always been very careful to make sure that we tick all the boxes and meet all the rules. And that's what we would wish to carry on doing in the future. So I can only um, suggest, in summary, that this is a very straightforward application for, a, for an entry to a residential area, uh, onto an estate. It's a gravel track with a gate. Uh, the splays are uh, agreed by highways. The fact that the gate is back from the road allows cars to come in and stop and then open the gate. We believe it will alleviate the traffic uh, to some extent from the school entrance problem. And I don't understand any, any references to uh, the paddock in terms of development or overdevelopment. It's a garden and he's improved and landscaped his garden. 
Thank you. Do you have any uh, <coughs> questions for Mr. Culver? Um, you refer to it as a driveway um, from the residential property, and we, we saw earlier about the electric gate being secured. So is that gate going to be shut off? There's no access between the two roads. No, the gate you're referring to, if you currently go into the malls of Crouch School entrance, yeah. and then you immediately turn left into the front of Lodge Estate, there's a track that runs down beside the school. This electric gate here. On the right. That's the road I was just referring to. And you then turn right uh, to go through this gate that I just talked about down to the bottom of the school and at the moment you then turn as you once you've gone through the gate you then turn left to go to the back of mr Crabbe's house that gate will remain it's a security gate partly for the benefit of the school security as was mentioned by the planner and also for our own security because there's a lot of tractors and equipment kept in sheds down the bottom and there are also boat moorers that go down to the river there <laughs> and they need secure entry as well. But that has no relevance really to the uh, driveway that we're suggesting, which is at the other end of the properties. Other questions, Mr. Culver? Yes, you know. Um, I'll ask a question. You're referring to this land <clears throat> as paddock, as a garden, state. Could you uh, actually clarify as to is, is this is this part of the curtilage of that uh, um, and therefore domestic curtilage or is it uh, or is it paddock or is it field or is it uh, something else? Perhaps you could uh, clarify. Well as I, I think I've already said it's Mr Crabbe's garden as you run down from the back of his house across his car parking area to the tennis court that has been talked about that's the bounds of what is his garden. So he has um, landscaped that area and planted and made it into a very nice garden. Um, so it's within his domestic curtilage? Indeed. Um, is this the, uh, can I ask another question? Is, is, is the tennis court a domestic one? Or is it... Yes, purely domestic, yes. And uh, to answer the earlier suggested question. There is no traffic to the tennis court. Uh, I mean, it's a private tennis court only used by uh, people who live there. It's not used by the school even. The uh, other questions for uh, the agent? Thank you very much then, Mr. Corbett. Thank you. Uh, now, um, I think we've got staff. The ward member, Ms. Simpson. Yes, thank you. Good evening, welcome. Thank you, thank you. Good evening. Um, planning Committee, the first thing I would ask or ask you to ask the question is why such a large entrance? Um, 4.8 metre wide displays, tarmac, and a large inset gate is being applied um, for at the edge of a small rural village in the AONB to serve effectively, well, as I see it, one cottage. Um, I don't know the answer. Um, I'll explain shortly why I say one cottage as I see it. And I have listened to the presentation so far and um, it, it, it is unclear to me. Um, but I want to state at the outset that I see this development of a new road, the subject of this application, as out of keeping with the character and appearance of the area. It's resembling creeping development on the edge of the village. I live in Molesford, and from what I know on the ground, I find the map attached at Appendix 1 um, unclear and incomplete in detail when viewed together with paragraph 1.4 of the officer's report. And Paragraph 1.4 of the officer's report is lifted from the planning and design and access statement prepared for the applicant, and it states that the new road will serve five properties. Um, I find this potentially misleading 
And it turns out right at the beginning, Sharon Crawford pointed out one of the things that I picked up. Um, from the planning and design and access statement, I quote, the new access road will serve the following properties, one and two Cranford cottages, Cranford Lodge, the old laundry, the stables, the estate office. Firstly and importantly, the old laundry is the existing paddock. It's not building, building with residents, despite the name. Um, the photograph in the design and access statement labelled figure, figure two, I think, illustrates this. Um, secondly, the new road will not serve one Cranford Cottages. This is what Sharon Corp pointed out at the beginning. The building marked one on the map. Access to this property is directly off the main road and the residents of this property have objected to this application, stating impact on the character and appearance of the area. Um, that's actually not the picture I'm talking about. The map I'm talking about is Appendix 1 of the officer's report, but um, if that helps people, I'm not sure it does. Um, thirdly, the stables, the estate office, is not marked on the map. Um, is it the outbuilding that is connected to two Cranford cottages, shown on the, the map in Appendix 1 as the block north of the building marked two? This isn't the map I'm talking about. I'm talking about Appendix 1 to the officer's report. Um, I don't know the answer. Um, the stables, the estate office, I know is not the building sitting between two Cranford cottages and Cranford Lodge on the map. These are one and two Cranford flats. That is shown on this map that you've got up. Though it is proposed in the application that the new road will serve Cranford Lodge, this property will remain more easily accessible from the entrance to Molster Preparatory School, particularly as the gate that we've seen with a keypad closes off access from behind two Cranford cottages. Previous applications for the development of Molster Pre Prep School, Preparatory School, are listed to justify support for this application. The access and size of the entrance to a school should not be the guide to what is acceptable for an entrance to a cottage. I urge planning committee to really question the nature of this application and to see that an area of uh, area of natu national of outstanding natural beauty, we need to give our landscape the highest protection. And this new road is, as the parish council says in its objection, overdevelopment. And as the neighbour at One Cranford Cottages says, it has a negative impact on the character and appearance of the area. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, do we have any uh, questions? Councillor Yavashak. Um, thank you, Councillor Simpson. That's been extremely helpful. <laughs> while, while we were listening to you, we were also trying to find the map that you were talking about. And what I'd like to do is, is, is for you, can you see what maps are being shown on the screen? Yeah, I and can. And you're talking about Appendix 1 map. Which yeah. map are you talking about, please? The Planning Committee Officer's Report map. So I went on to, to the meeting minutes, the agenda for the meeting. Yeah. And do you have a page number? Is it page uh, 129? Page That's 79. It. One two nine. Appendix one, one two nine. One two nine appendix okay. one. Yes. Fine. Okay. I just want to get the map that you are. Yeah. Particularly talking about. Yeah. Sorry. Not that one. It's, it's it much more much more colourful. Yeah, we're we're trying to get there, and we're <laughs> patient. That one. That one. That one. That one. Ah, right. It's okay. Yes, it's much more colourful than mine. Um, <laughs> right. My question is this: This are you saying that this access road feeds only one cottage? To be honest, that's almost the impression I'm getting. It's clearly not what the applicant is saying, but I find that the design and access statement that they submitted with this application is very confusing. And I think I, I'm not sure if someone else said it's unclear what it will serve. And that's okay. my point, really. It's unclear what it will serve because Fine. it definitely doesn't serve number one, which is 
updated in the design and access statement. It does serve two Cranford cottages, so the one with two on. The old laundry is the paddock, although it sounds like a build, it should be a building, it's the paddock. Um, and then Cranford Lodge, which is nearest the school entrance, you can see down there. The, the gate, if you look at the purple that turns, um, if you go in the school entrance to the south of Cranford Lodge and turn left and then turn right, that's where the gate is. So why would someone going to Cranford Lodge go all the way around and through a gate to access Cranford Lodge? Um, I believe it's actually the um, the agent, but you know, I, I, for me, and I don't know where it talks about the stables, the estate office, but I can't see where the estate office is. Is it the little building outside of two? Right, we'll, I don't we'll, know. Thank, thank you. We'll try and get clarification from the officer on that. Because uh, I, I think we've got to, I mean, it's a, it's a question that we've got to establish how many cottages is, is this drive going to serve? Is it just one or is it purple? That's uh, that's yeah, just just to perhaps help, I think we need to make sure you focus on the application before you, which is the the new development, which is the driveway or the access road, etc. What it serves, the number of serves. Although there's been mentioned about the benefit in terms of how it overrides the or uh, assessed against the A AOMB, but I think you need to go back to the consideration of the access itself in terms of its impact on the AOMB, the character of the area. The, the council there just mentioned about the concern as is the parish council think about it. So focus rather than in terms of who it's serving, what it's serving, albeit that's a relevant point for the, the balancing act you need to, need to assess. I think just go back and focus back in terms of what is the, the access in terms of the impact on the character and the environment. That, I think yeah, is the key okay. thing to Yes, I, I respect that. Although, may I counter? No, no. The applicant said the reason why we need this drive is to stop the traffic going through the Molesworth house. Uh, because you can imagine at closing time and opening time, there are a lot of parents and children and many about. So therefore, it is relevant. Fine, I take all the things about the character, but it is relevant. How many? If there are four cottages and there are four cars coming out, that is materially different from one cottage in one. Mm, okay. So that, that's what I want clarification on. But maybe the agent may be invited with your permission to clarify, but no, maybe no. not. No, Fine, no. okay. Uh... Right, okay. okay. Any, any further questions for uh, Councillor Simpson? Councillor Sue, just, just for clarity, because I'm going to ask the officer the same thing. Proposals in our back states, this new access road will serve the following properties, and it lists the old laundry, and you're saying it's not a property? No, That's it's not, not a property. It's, it, it was the paddock. It was a green field, which if you look at the design and application set statement, the picture that they've got in there shows a green field, a paddock. Okay. Thank you. Thank you very much. So, I can ask, ask you a question. So, the uh, so your understanding from this uh, application, the, the from the from the public highway, you're going to get a are, are we going to get a sort of two lane entrance in and out, and then followed by a, a a sliding gate or closing gate? Is that right? That's what I understand from the application because it talks about it being inset, doesn't it? It says yes. it's a very, very wide splay, it's very wide entrance off the road, and then a gate six, was it six metres in or something? Uh, so tarmac yes, and then six right. metres in. And you're right on the edge of the, you're right on the edge of the village there with views of the Chilterns behind. It, it doesn't really show from the photographs. So, you know, what you do see, yes, you see the field there. Um, and you see tennis courts or whatever, uh, and and it goes beyond. But it's the edge of the village. It's 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 well, I I, I think it's out of character and out of keeping with the area. But okay, that that size thank, thank that. You. Any uh, thank you very much. Uh, any further questions for Councillor Simpson? No. Um, I think uh, thank you very much. Then I think we've. Uh, uh,
Uh, thank you for the uh, clarification there. Um, we now go back to then to uh, questions for the officer. Um, can we have any questions here? Sorry. Yes, yes so I've got a couple of questions. So, do we know if the old laundry is actually a building? Because that seems to be a bit of a. And if it is a building, is this a dwelling, a separate dwelling? As a result of questions that had been raised by local residents and the parish council, the case officer went back to the agent to um, seek clarification on exactly which buildings were going to be served by this access. And this is why the agent has provided the map that's on the display at the moment. Um, so we have number one, Cranford Cottages is in, in white, and that is, um, sorry, let's get that bit bigger for me, sorry. So this, um, yes, you can just see the cursor there. Yeah. So this is number one, and this is not included as part of the access, and I cl clarified that at the beginning, so the report is incorrect, the design and access statement was incorrect, but we have received the correct statement from the, from the agent now. Um, so we have number two, Cranford Cottages, which is part of, will be served by the access, the old laundry, which is a separate building, and this is what the agent is saying is called the old laundry, not the tennis court um, over uh, on this part of the site. And then there are two flats in this um, building here. Uh, Cranford Cottage, flat one and two, and then Cranford Lodge. Now that is a very recent plan from the agent to verify exactly who will be served as having that yet. My second question is, there seems to be some doubt about what this land that it's going across is passed as. Is it paddock or is it garden? Is it this plan is probably the best uh, I mean, the best plan to uh, use for these purposes. The, the red edged line shows the uh, application area. That crosses an area of paddock that is not within the domestic curtilage of um, the property. The tennis court, which has been referred to, is here. Is, can you see my cursor there? Yeah, that's the second. That's gone. Yeah. <laughs> Yes, thank you, Darius. Um, yeah, so that is the tennis court. That has planning permission. Um, the red-edged uh, site area around that was very closely drawn around the court itself. We have an open enforcement inv investigation at the moment for the pergola and the other structures within um, the remainder of the public area. But that is a completely separate issue to what we're considering tonight, which is the planning application for the access. So it is it's classed as paddock land, that's where the application uh, Yes, and, and we have a current investigation mm -hmm. ongoing on, on the other, other issue. Uh, sorry, that's a... uh, Thank you. Uh, can I just raise the question about the old laundry again? It doesn't look to be a residence. Uh, it looks like perhaps there was an old building there, but it does. Have we got any photographs to show that this is a residence that needs a drive? I don't have any photographs of that specific building, and I don't know whether it's a residence or whether it is the estate office. Okay. <laughs> On the map, where, where it shows where the estate office is, uh, this one here. It, see, my understanding was, put back out again. Zoom back out so I can just see it. But, yeah. So this is the build up where the small pick up and so forth. So I was under the impression this road was, if this is going to, if this is going to serve these buildings and this one here, then this is being blocked off to somehow separate it. This is just going to turn into a loop. You're telling me this, they're going to come in here to access this point. They won't drive in here and just go around. There's no, going to be no, no way, because it says a new access to serve those properties, but what world would they, they're cycling or driving, but they can go around there rather than go in the nearest point? Because at the end of the day, we've got, it's in, in the AOMB, so we've got, to, we've got to show exceptional circumstances. So if it's, if it's not really going to be serving these all these buildings, um, 
and actually, you know, it's either actually show an exceptional or it's just literally a driveway for one house. Again, um, just see our first there. The access will be coming in at this point. We have to be joining here. It will serve this property, the old laundry, the flats, the Cranford Lodge, and and as I understand, the estate office, which is down right down the bottom board. Thank you for spotting that. Um, and um, there will be the, this area here is currently gravelled, yeah. and then. There's a link in through here. Now, how they operate the internal arrangement of that access is really for them to decide. Um, so you're just looking at the application on, on its own merits. The test for development in the area of A and B is not that they've got to be exceptional circumstances. Um, it's a duty to preserve and um, enhance the character of the area. Okay. Uh, just a very quick one. Um, talking about the splay on the road, um, we've got we've got a splay to safety, yes, and we've got a gate inset, um, presumably so that the car can go through the gate, close the gate, be parked in an area, and then turn left or right onto the highway. And highway is Highways has found this to be acceptable. So the question is, has the highways proved the the driveway? The um, the highways officer has looked at this very carefully, and there's no objection to it. The gate is set far back from the highway that it will allow a, a car to pull off the road and and sort of. Stationary in front of the gate so that it opens and you don't get cars sitting on the highway whilst the gate is open. Or open. If the gate was on the highway, it would cause problems. Thank you. Yes. Thank you. Quickly again, so is, is the estate office a dwelling or is that? Um, I don't believe it is a dwelling. I believe it is an office for the for the management of the estate. The agents keep referring it as a driveway, which is which sounds like it's a you know we have driveways into residential buildings, not into offices. And so, well, that's a anyway. That's that's fine. Are there any other further questions for the officer? No. Um, Oh, no, Councillor Hillett. No, not a question. Let's move into the next. <laughs> okay, okay. Well, in that case, yes, indeed. Yeah. yeah. Move on. Uh, you are. Do you want to propose a motion then? Yeah, I'm going to propose refusal of planning permission because I do think that this unbalance is more harmful to the AONB. Listening to the ward member, listening to uh, the fact that the ward member is also a resident of Morsford. And hearing that it is quite different regarding uh, how many properties require access, I feel it is unnecessary. The school, the existing properties, been there many years, managed quite well with that one. We've got an objection from the property directly next to the proposal. And I think to cut through with uh, an added access there is totally harmful to the AOMB. Thank you much, Councillor Hill. Do we have a seconder for that? Oh, Councillor Havel, I think I saw you, but uh, you'd like to, um, like to speak now? or I'll speak now. Yes. Um, so it is, I think, harmful. I'm conscious of the um, need to preserve and enhance the character of the area. Um, it, it's perhaps on balance, um, but this ha this doesn't seem necessary, and and it will be it will be more harmful for this to be approved. It is a, a, an entrance being put in. I'm conscious that this is a a paddock, and it's not within the domestic heritage, which also um, I think has a has a bearing on why I would want to um, second. Thank you. Thank you very much, Councillor Bell. Okay, we'll open the, the debates then. Um, 
Uh, Councillor Sudney, I think you were on the poise to, to speak to second. I was going to second, I'll speak if you like. Um, on, on the highways point about not objecting, I mean, they clearly their role was to check the visibility and display and uh, so forth. They weren't there to decide the need of this access road. That's our job. Um, so even though we haven't got salty uh, objecting, I still think uh, this is our role. Um, I must admit, when I, when I was looking at the plans, I thought this was going to be to segregate the residential properties from the school. Um, and, and it doesn't seem to be that at all. It's, it looks like a private driveway to one one property, um, one dwelling, as the, as the properties listed don't actually have anybody in there. Um, the highway officer did say that it, it will equate to about one movement an hour. I'm not sure that if, it's, if the school pick up and drop off time, if one movement is going to make that much difference to uh, releasing the pressure on the school. Um, so I, 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 it's just a lack of need for it, I think. You know, that's what I'm against. But we're going to we're going to destroy a piece of and change the character of of the area just 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 for a private dwelling. Thank you very much. Any else questions to Councillor Gelshack? Um, I won't be supporting the motion. Um, I think the applicant and the officer and the report have made the case for it. Um, there are clearly properties here, at page 129, appendix one, there are clearly properties here that um, have to go through the school entrance to go in and out. Um, and I would have liked to sort of question the, the applicant, but that was you're quite right, Chair, not to go back. But the, the existing, from what I can gather, the existing properties are served by a gravel drive through this metal gate that is, uh, that is the security pit. Therefore, this new entrance that's going to be put in would link up with the gravel drives so that it would actually serve properties that are on page one to one, which is one or two Cranford Cottage, Cranford Lodge, and the old laundry. And to be honest, I don't think uh, an entrance on to the highway is is materially damaging the air in, the, in any way, shape or form. So therefore, I will not support this, this motion. Thank you. Very much. Um, anybody else wishes to? Um, I would just add. I think we we our previous application we were looking for uh, an access, and that one not in the air and B. Potentially a much higher volume of traffic than the two or three houses. Um, they're specking out of a gravel drive, low impact, single carriageway width, with trees alongside it, and here. You've got this, they're virtually a road going in, this, you know, a steel gate, anyway, and B. I, I think creating quite an adverse uh, an impact uh, for a, a quite unnecessary. Um, and I think if the uh, applicant, you know, if, if we refuse it, the applicant came back with a much more sympathetic um, proposal then there would be a, a different matter. But I think what we have in front of us is something which I think is a, has an adverse impact on the AMB and it fails to uh, protect and enhance the AONB. So I will be supporting the motion. Um, yeah, just to sum up briefly, um, I agree, even if we are looking at four properties and not one because there is that lack of clarity, it's still too much even just for four properties. Um, there isn't the need as such. They've managed all this time with the school there, and I presume whoever moved in would know there's a school there and that one entrance. So why put a whole road and destroy the AONB? I don't understand it, so I can't. Uh, that's my summary. Okay. Yeah. Thank you very much. Can I just get the clarification of the material, the reasons for the okay, Just is that Sharon? Is they. I think we've got it that we have adverse impact on the. Uh, yes. I think from our point of view, we we picked up from your 
comments is, is about the, the impact on the character of the AOMB, the planning balance between the benefit, the public benefit is not outweighed for those exceptional circumstances justified development in the AOMB. So we'll we'll pull together a, re a refusal along those lines. Is that? Yeah. Yeah, thank you very much. Yeah. Right, in that case, um, we're happy to, to go to the vote now. All those in favour of the motion to refuse this application, please raise. And I think that's pretty decisive. And got to give a shot. Thank you. Thank you very much. And we now move on to our next item on the agenda. Which our final item, which is over pages, uh, item eleven. Uh, variation of condition two on the approved plans for planning application. Uh, for demolition of existing dwelling buildings and structure of five dwellings. Um, and Sharon. <laughs> Thank you much, Sharon, again. Thank you, Chair. This Go one on, is one of my cases, so uh, I'll know a little bit more about this one, hopefully. Um, since the report went to print, I've received um, some further responses. Uh, the Crown Prevention Designer has no objection to the proposal. We have also received three further letters of objection from local residents in respect of increases to traffic, loss of smaller units, which puts them out of reach of low living and households, and the impact on the sewerage system, which is already overwhelmed. I'm going to the summary of the application. Um, planning permission was granted on this site in December 2021 for the redevelopment of the site to provide for five dwellings. The application seeks planning permission to vary the approved plans, and that's condition two of the original permission, um, to allow for changes to the approved dwellings on plots one and plots two. Changes are an additional bedroom on plot one, which would go from a two bed to a three bed property, and an additional bedroom to plot two, which would go from a three bed to a four bed property. There are some minor changes to the external elevations um, which are also proposed, and that's the addition of two roof lights. Sorry, I'll just move that a little bit bigger so you can see that on the screen. Um, so we have two roof lights in the um, rear elevation and a door, and then some very minor changes to the windows in the side elevations. The approved elevations are on the um, left-hand side there with the proposed elevations on the right-hand side. When assessing a Section 73 application, the Council cannot revisit the original consent. The Council can only consider the original condition and the reasons for applying the condition. Lots 1 and 2 are a pair of semi-detached dwellings and there is no change to the size of the building despite the increase in the number of bedrooms. The increase in bedrooms is accommodated by a change to the internal arrangement of rooms at first floor. An increase in the number of bedrooms can increase the requirement for parking spaces and garden area. However, in this case, both properties have two on-site parking spaces, which complies with the Oxford County Council parking standards, and the garden sizes are in excess of the minimum standards for private amenity areas, even for the larger property, so even more the increased number of bedrooms. The minor changes to the elevations are also acceptable. Um, there, have, there has been some concern from, about the capacity of the foul sewer system in the vicinity to accommodate the development. Whilst we cannot consider the drainage issues in this Section 73 application, our drainage engineers have confirmed that the foul sewage details as they relate to the site and the development are acceptable. In addition, they have confirmed that the foul water drainage connection is dealt with under a legal agreement with Thames Water under the Water Industry Act. Thames Water have a statutory obligation to accept waste from domestic dwellings, and this means that they will have to upgrade their network to accommodate the foul flows. So this should address the concerns of the local residents. But I would emphasise again that we can't really take the... Um, 
be uh, concerned about foul drainage into consideration with this current application because the addition of one extra bedroom in two of the properties isn't won't really material affect the flows from the development. We've also had a recent disapplication which has discharged the pre-commencement conditions allowing for development to come to the site. The application is Thank you much indeed, Sharon. Um, and uh, we've got only one public speaker I can see, which is um, Paul Snodhouse, the who's the agent. Um, he is here in person. Uh, you'll have about five minutes uh, when you're ready. Thank you. Good evening. Uh, Paul Southhouse, architect, um, taking the consent of development, uh, developing the technical detail, uh, and moving on to the construction of, of the homes. We were not the original architects for the proposal. Um, one of the reasons you're here and you're listening to this is um, partly my fault and partly the gentleman over there, Ian Ashcroft, who's come along as, uh, as a developer. Um, one, when when purchasing a site or with consent, as a designer, we look at ways in which we can enhance um, the design and, and make it better for the people who want to live there. Um, so if with the uh, plots one and two semi-detached houses, these were um, a two bed and a three bed house. Immediately when I look at the layout and the design of the houses, for the, to me the stairs in the wrong place and then you can make better use of the internal arrangement without changing anything in a material way. Um, so I put into, um, looked at the design and said, right, let's move the stair. There's wasted space on the first floor. We can then put a smaller bedroom or potentially a study onto the, the first floor. Uh, we went into negotiations or discussions with the planning authority about that as determined because there's an increase of bedrooms it, it's best to um, consult on these matters and it's for your you to make a decision uh, this evening in terms of some of the important things that, that um that this is uh, can I stand up because i find it really useful and it was standing up yeah, please. <laughs> but this is the approved plan and this is the, the proposal you can see the stair is very much inboard um, on the plan and that the roof slopes down. So to me, it made sense moving the stair across. Um, therefore, it, it opens up that space because as obviously you can't use the space above a stair and the roof slope is there. So therefore, um, yeah, the master, the two bed and master bedroom, very large master with a ensuite at the rear. That becomes smaller, but then also has an ensuite. Um, then moving the bathroom from the front of the house to the rear. The benefit, again, to me is that you don't have an obscured window to the front elevation. Um, so bathroom is at the back and then the other roof light to the on screen is there. So this is the additional room, um, which I think would be really useful for anyone in terms of home working and to get things that times have changed in terms of what we need from our homes and more flexibility, um, the better. So. I'm here for any questions you have. Other than that, thank you, thank you very much. Thank you very much. Are there any questions for the? Uh, yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, would you agree with the neighbours' concerns that that would reduce the ability of the lower-income people to purchase one of these? So, in terms of values, it's not something that I'm motivated by. It's purely um, trying to create something that's desirable and, and suits the. It's what people want now, really. But you probably you think perhaps when this was designed originally, it's, it's probably pre or during um, COVID, and uh, the need, needs have changed of our homes significantly. Yeah, just, just a quick one. Looking at the plans that you had stood next to and pointed to, mm. the um, the uh, the approved one looks a hell of a lot smaller than the pro proposed one. <laughs> Is that just the picture? Uh, is that in terms of us? So can we, um, Councillor Governor, how the, the officer would like to? Sorry, I just thought it might be easy for me to answer this question. Those plans that you have before you aren't to scale. So I've screenshot the, the, the floor plan. So if they 
aren't coming up looking for the same size. That's my my fault that they are. And the footprint of both is exactly the same. It's just the internal idea. Yeah. All right, no further questions. Thank you. Any other further questions for the applicant? Uh, Tina, so yeah. thank you very much indeed. Have you a lot? Um, we don't have anybody in the other public speakers. Uh, so, um, the questions for the officer. Perhaps. Go straight to the proposal. Okay, well, you're, 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 you're racing your head there. Oh, sorry, let's uh, cancel off the was, was there much engagement with the parish council who objected to this? To, 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 to try and see what because they haven't bothered turning up, so um, I just wonder if they were, if we actually you know, engage to try and stop them coming planning committee so that save save time unless they're willing to come and explain why they've got such concerns. So you chair, um, I've not really engaged with the parish council, but I have been in, been in um, direct contact with the local member, and um, his concerns were were related to the uh, foul drainage and. Um, been able to uh, satisfy his concerns in, in those respects. Have to deal with uh, Councillor Stoker, my friend. Um, okay, Councillor Gavishak, you're actually uh, itching to propose a motion. Uh, so I propose acceptance of this. Councillor Stoker, second it. Second it. Um, I nothing to say. I'm a debate. That's one, one comment, which is that when I was looking at this earlier, I, I was noticing that actually it is a much better plan now, I think, inside. Right. So I, 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 mm. I, I am convinced by the motivation. So that will keep that beginning. Uh, yeah, I would just say, uh, yeah, it was nice to hear from the applicants as well, because, um, you know, clearly it was somebody who cared about the design and, and understood that things have changed since COVID. And I agree, it's a lot better. Yeah. Yes, we went. No, no more debates. We'll go to a vote. I'll, I'll just sum up. Sum up. <laughs> if, I, if I may, please. Uh, just, uh, yes, I, I'm surprised this was actually called in, but then some of my applications that I call in, you probably describe. Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> That's an end goal. No, I just wanted to say um, um, thank you to the, uh, the junior officer. Uh, to Paul Fox turning up to the meeting um, at the, <laughs> for the same and giving us such valuable advice. Um, I'm sure it's because Paul was on holiday or taking on well. Okay, well, thank you for that. But uh, yeah, no, let's 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 approve it. And All those in favour of the motion to approve? Okay, nothing else. <laughs> Well, thank you very much. Uh, thank you, everybody. I like to close yeah. so the meetings. Uh, uh, Susie, please can be on the broadcast. Thanks for the other comment. I was going to make. It's like the other one. Thank you. Thank you. I was just saying it's very polite.